<laughs> now, Glasgow's southern necropolis, known as the Gobble City of the Dead, has a unique and interesting past. One man's decided to take time out of his full-time job to look after the historical site and set up education programmes for local children. So, we went along for a lesson. The Southern Necropolis itself was founded in 1840 uh, as a burial ground. Prior to it being established in 1839, uh, it was the, the local burial ground then was the old Gorbals burial ground established in 1715. Obviously as the Gorbals area was expanding, there was obviously a need for a bigger burial ground for people who lived in the community. So in 1840 the cemetery itself was opened and it was opened as a, offered as an affordable and respectable place of burial for the people of the area. Within the first six years of the cellar, the trough has been opened in 1840. In 1846, most of the, the layers in the central section had actually been purchased with the need for an additional uh, part of the cemetery in the eastern section opened in 1846. Later, in 1850, the largest part of the cemetery, the western section, was opened, which currently is the, the final resting place of Alexander Greek Thompson, the architect. Within the southern necropolis, in, in total, there's approximately 250,000 burials, a quarter of a million. Many characters within the cemetery, obviously local characters, and more established characters in the trail. We've got the nephew of Robert Burns the poet, John Begg. We've got Sir Thomas Lipton, the grocer and yachtsman, and Archibald Sinclair, the founder of the Celtic Press in Glasgow. Of all the 250,000 burials in the cemetery, there's quite a few character stones in the graveyard. One of which is known locally and fondly as the legendary White Lady, which is the final resting place to uh, John S. Smith, carpet manufacturer, and his wife, Magdalene Bear, and their housekeeper, Mary McNaughton. Both ladies who sadly lost their lives in 1933 due to the result of an accident that took place up at Queen's Park at Langside when they were crossing the road in a winter's night, it was raining, they crossed the road, they had their umbrellas up and unfortunately they got knocked down by a tram car. But the legend is of the Southern Necropolis White Lady, if you walk past her and should she turn her head and look at you, she'll turn you to stone. Now, to be safe of that legend, what you should do is come down to the Southern Necropolis and safely walk round the White Lady three times shouting out her name. And we're now standing in the western section of the Southern Necropolis and we're standing at the final resting place of one of our characters on the heritage trail known as Wee Willie White. He's a blind flute player from the salt market area of Glasgow where he used to busk. And you can see on Wee Willie White's stone originally, the stone carving was that of a stone flute inside its case. And through the years of uh, eroding because of the weather, the stone case is actually worn away. And it's recorded that he actually died in what was known then as respectable poverty. Presently we're promoting a project for the cemetery in the Southern Necropolis known as the Resurrect and History Project to promote the cemetery and its heritage and history to encourage children to come down and value the local heritage, history and appreciate the characters in the cemetery. And it's ongoing, there's a past, present and future for the Southern Necropolis and there's also at the moment a graphic novel just been produced in relation to the, the link with the Gorbals Vampire story which brings it up 50 years to the present. There's so many stories in the Southern Necropolis and hopefully you can come down for a visit. And as I like to always say, Southern Necropolis, there's life in the city of the dead.